in Bowling Green, Kentucky. A bigger test for the hometown Hilltoppers of WKU after rolling past Tennessee Tech in the opener on Tuesday night. They welcome in the Austin P. Governors off a fourth place finish in the OVC a year ago and bringing with them the conference's player of the year. Nate Gatter with you this afternoon from Bowling Green alongside former Mississippi State Bulldog Jay Walsh. And Jay, uh, this is going to be a bigger test for the Hilltoppers, no doubt. It will be. Uh, Austin P. take near the top of the Ohio Valley Conference preseason polls. And they have a very young, new roster. But the one guy that they do return is uh, dude, Terry Taylor, one of the best players, if not the best players player in that league. Bowling Green native for sure going to look to show out today in front of his hometown crowd. And Taylor did not have a scholarship offer to play at Western Kentucky. One of only three offers was with Austin P. And that is where Terry Taylor ended up. Meanwhile, Davion Hollingsworth, who got to 1,000 points for her, his career in the opener of his junior season Tuesday night, is the player to watch out for for Western. Davion Hollingsworth out of high school probably had a chance to go to a higher level. But he came here, and it's been a great fit for him. He's been in the starting lineup every single game of his career here. And like you mentioned, got his 1,000 point the other night against Tennessee Tech. And uh, handling the ball today, going to have to do a better job taking care of the basketball. He is not a natural point. He is uh, has a scores mentality, gets a little bit loose, and plenty capable handler. Just got to look to find the open guy to create for others. And there is Hollingsworth with the opening bucket. Western Kentucky in the white at home. Austin B in the gray on the road. Governor's coming off a throttling 110 to 67, a Division II Oakland City Tuesday night in Clarksville. Out of the hands of the big man, Mateus Silvera. And here's Cameron Justice for Western. He had a good Hilltoppers debut on Tuesday night in that 12 point victory over Tennessee Tech. Carson Williams did as well. Inside on Eli Abayev. And the spinning jumper goes off glass. Good strong physical move by Williams. Got himself from the perimeter, off the dribble down to the paint. Couple shot fakes and patience and was able to get the bucket off the glass. Antoine Butler step back. It's a deep two and it goes. Antoine Butler. Butler, the sophomore from Philadelphia, had 13 points on six of nine shooting. Tuesday night in that win for the Governors when they did not shoot well from the outside, just five of 23 from three-point range as a team. Justice all the way to the rim. You wonder if the deeper three-point line might have an impact on some of these teams that rely on the three-point shot earlier in the year. Austin P shot the three-pointer very well last season, better than 38% to lead the Ohio Valley Conference, but this is a team similar to Western Kentucky's Tuesday opponent in Tennessee Tech with a lot of fresh faces, but he is not. Terry Taylor, 20 and a half points a game a year ago, the preseason OVC player of the year pick. He's a specimen, and as a perimeter, he's a nightmare as a matchup because as a perimeter player, he's got the skills to take a, a forward or a center away from the basket, uh, can score at all three levels from the, from the perimeter, which means he can make the three-point shot. He's got an in-between game, and he can get all the way to the rim and finish. But where his bread and butter is is in the post, as you just saw right there. He's going he's gonna to take a smaller wing player down to the basket and look to use his size and strength around the goal. You saw the coaches there, Matt Figger in his third season at Austin P. And Rick Stansbury in his fourth with Western Kentucky. Hollingsworth inside, turned away by Abayev. And Austin P could tie it or take the lead. Reginald G, first year governor, over on that right wing, number 12 in gray. Transfer from Alabama State, where he was a second tee ball swag selection last year, his third straight season starting with the Hornets. Silvera to Butler is three off the mark, and Savage the rebound. Carson Williams. Savage for three. Western Kentucky did not shoot the ball well from deep either Tuesday night. G in transition. It's tied up at six. Hollingsworth against Butler. Savage. Good jump stop, but he's blocked by Silvera. Western Kentucky keeps it with 11 to shoot. Savage, uh, you know, shot the ball well from the perimeter last year. Didn't get un, uh, uncorked like he would have liked to in the 
Tennessee Tech game the other night, but he was patient. He did uh, get himself to the line, shot a few free throws, and early in the game here, as you can see, looking to attack. Bassey fouled inside. He will go to the line. He was the last Western Kentucky starter to score Tuesday night in the opener against Tennessee Tech, and this would make him the fourth Hilltopper to score tonight if he could get at least one of these two. And, and Jay, as much as you appreciate his unselfishness, I think it's fair to say that Western Kentucky wants him to have a few more touches and, and get a few more chances to get going, especially in the first half. I do think they'd like to play through him offensively in the post, uh, establish that position, because even if he doesn't score, even if he does make that pass out, it, it, the deeper he catches the ball in the paint, the better life is going to be for their, their shooters on the perimeter. Name to the watch lists for both the John Wooden and James Naismith Awards. The two most prestigious college basketball player of the year awards. Only 50 players named to those lists. Returning freshman and defensive player of the year in Conference USA. Only the second time the same player has taken home both of those awards in the same year in league history. Taylor inside against Williams. Finishes on the reverse. That's four early for Taylor. Well, you've already seen already what a nightmare he is as a matchup. On the first possession, he takes Savage down in the post and was able to outmuscle him. That time, he brings the bigger, stronger Carson Williams out to the perimeter, blows right by him and able to get to the basket. So if, whoever you put on him, best of luck <laughs> because he can, he can do it all. And it's interesting you say that because that versatility was viewed almost as a negative on Taylor when he was coming out of high school. He was labeled as a tweener, meaning he wasn't thought to be skilled enough to play guard at the collegiate level, and he wasn't thought to be big enough to play in the post. In the end, he's been able to do both and averaged better than 20 points a game last year. Steps out for a three. Rebound off. Savage ends up with Hollingsworth. I bet Terry Taylor didn't look like that when he came out of high school. You could tell... He has taken advantage of uh, his time in the weight room since being at Austin Peay. Well-built young man. Cameron Justice, grad transfer from Hinman, Kentucky, hits the first three for either team tonight. And Bassey clears the miss on the other end off the right hand of the freshman, Jordan Adams. Justice has hit two of his first three three-pointers in a Hilltoppers uniform. He has seven early points tonight. And Jay, I think they would have expected him to make an offensive impact, but it looks like he could be one of the most important players on this team offensively. He is, and he's, he's that a weakness offensively to his game. He's a very good shooter, uh, can distribute, handles the ball capably, and as you can see right there, gets his head down there, he'll get to the basket and finish. Nice strong move with his left hand there. Better than 18 and a half a game a year ago at IUPUI for Justice. Only five to shoot. Butler going to have to hurry. On Hollingsworth with two. Fall the way just before the horn. Tough shot. Fading out of bounds almost on the baseline. That's four points for Butler. Matches Taylor's total. Western Kentucky went out to a significant early lead Tuesday night against Tennessee Tech. And although the Hilltoppers failed to truly blow out the Golden Eagles as it looked like they might when they had a better than 20-point lead early in the of the Austin event, and it sends us into our first break of the afternoon. Western Kentucky in home game number two, out to a 13-10 lead, just over five minutes in. Back in Bowling Green at Diddle Arena, where Western Kentucky is out to a 13-10 lead over Austin P on this Saturday afternoon. MedCenter Health injury report is pretty simple for Western Kentucky today. Everybody is healthy, and that is a happy news to report, regardless of uh, which team you're rooting for. MedCenter Health is the official health care partner of WKU Athletics. Nate Gatter and Jay Walton back with you from Diddle Arena. And uh, Jay, certainly positives for both teams in the early going. If nothing else, it looks like the Hilltoppers defensively and they are not alone in this regard, going to struggle to contain Terry Taylor. Well, everybody that Austin B plays this year is going to struggle. You can, uh, you know, try to play him with quickness. You can try to play him with size. He's, he's got skills to combat either one of those. Uh, going to see a lot of double teams from time to time as well. Out of the timeout, Austin B just did not guard Jared Savage for the stuff. Miscommunication there. Somebody just didn't talk the matchup, and Coach Figure not going to be very happy about that. Inside, Adams is fouled. So all Western Kentucky starters now have scored. Hilltoppers did make their first two substitutions of the day out of the timeout. Josh Anderson, the high-flying junior from Louisiana, is in, along with the freshman Jordan Rawls. 
who is ostensibly the backup point guard. You see Adams, the freshman, shoot for Austin P. But Western Kentucky doesn't really have a starting point guard right now. Tavion Hollingsworth and Cameron Justice, both experienced combo guards, are sharing that role with Kenny Cooper, the senior transfer from Lipscomb, yet to be granted an NCAA waiver to be eligible. And uh, Jay, as much as we talk about Hollingsworth and Justice growing into that role, if Cooper doesn't get that eligibility at any point, which is a possibility, Jordan Rawls might end up as a, a possible growth element for, for the Hilltoppers where he could just move into this role over time and take some pressure off those two. Yeah, he really will. And, um, you know, early in the season here, they'd love to give him more minutes, more exposure, handling the ball, getting it to the right guys. Uh, he can score too, though. He's, he's also another guy capable of uh, putting up some numbers and getting in the paint and creating for himself as well. Foul called against Sam DeVoe for Austin P. Freshman from Evansville, Indiana. Terry Taylor, a problem even trying to inbound the ball past him. Our first look here at Evan Henson, transfer for from South Carolina for Austin P, a former football and basketball star for the Gamecocks. Henson missed the opener for Austin P with injury, but he is in along with DeVoe and Adams off the governor's bench, Taylor and Butler. The two starters still on the floor for the visitors, and our officials are over to the scorer's table to uh, make sure the shot clock in particular is exactly where it's supposed to be. It had reset to 20, and they wanted it at 18. Anderson against the aforementioned Hinson. All the way inside. He can get way up, but we saw him struggle with a couple of those finishes even after his athleticism allowed him to get to the rim on Tuesday night. He had only four points in 14 minutes against Tennessee Tech, a player in Anderson who started all but six games for the Hilltoppers a year ago. Taylor against Bassey, knocked up in the air. Adams on the cut. Taylor the offensive rebound. Another chance for Austin P. Got a mismatch in the post with Taylor with Justice trying to guard him. Hinson fires away for three instead, and it's a fourth chance now for the Governors. Taylor against Anderson. Finally, Western Kentucky tracks down a rebound. Governor's over four on that trip, and Jordan Adams called for the transition reach against Rawls. Hilltopper's lucky on that possession. They just as switched off on Taylor in the post. You can see him immediately. Hey, who's coming to help me here? I need a little help. Uh, but the governor's not able to get it inside to Taylor settle for the long jump shot. Well, 2-3 zone from Austin P, which Tennessee Tech showed at times against the Hilltoppers Tuesday night. Justice for three. Ten early points for Cameron Justice. He's hit all four shots from the field. Anderson the slot on Adams. Great job attacking the zone defense by the Hilltoppers. Anytime the ball touches the middle of the floor against the zone, good things usually happen. And Josh Anderson flashed to the free throw line area, able to kick out to Justice for the wide open shot. Isaiah Cozart in for Charles Bassey, who played 35 minutes. Not many six foot 11 posts are gonna play 35 minutes in the season opener. But all the starters logged major minutes for Western Kentucky. Hinton steps out of bounds. Austin P. turnover. Bassey came back this year a little bit slimmer, a little bit better shape. So he, he's gonna be able to log a lot of minutes when they need him to. And they don't really have a experienced backup for him. So. Uh, Cozart, the freshman, going to get some time here and there, but they, they really want Bassey on the floor as much as possible uh, unless he's in some kind of foul trouble. Only two starters, Savage and Justice, on the floor for Western Kentucky for the moment. Anderson inside, hangs and has it roll off the rim again. Cozart in a battle for the rebound with Butler. Alternating possession sends it to the Governors, but 
Jay, as much as Anderson has missed these couple of early opportunities inside, you can see how that incredible leaping ability he has allows him to just hang there in the air and kind of let the defense fly by him. Great slasher. He's phenomenal going to his right, as you saw right there. And he really gets to the foul line well, loves to attack the rim, and uh, has shown that this EA Diddle crowd some highlight dunks throughout his career. Adams walked. And that sends us into another break. Western Kentucky up by six in the early going from Diddle Arena. Austin P has had some positive moments, particularly on the glass, out rebounding the Hilltoppers eight to five. But they have been uh, limited with their success shooting the basketball. Western Kentucky by six. Western Kentucky up by six. Just more than eight minutes gone by first half from Diddle Arena on a Saturday afternoon. Jay, walk us through that last three-pointer for Cameron Justice, who now has 10 early points. Well, the Gunners go to a zone defense, and you can see Josh Anderson hit that high post area. Anytime the ball gets to the middle of the floor against the zone, you collapse the defense, and he was able to look opposite for the wide-open Cameron Justice. And Justice delivers. He's off to a hot start, 10 points already in the early going. And he's done it on perfect shooting, four of four from the field, and he's hit a pair of three-pointers. The grad transfer from IUPUI, who becomes the fifth different player on this Hilltoppers roster, who averaged 12 points or more at Division I a year ago. Four of them were on this Western Kentucky team last season. He averaged better than 18 and a half at IUPUI. Anderson slipped. G goes the other way, and Anderson swats it. His second rejection of the early going. Great hustle back. You know, they made the turnover on the other end, and nobody ducked their head and jogged back on the other end. They hustled back and, and made up for it with an incredible block from behind by Josh Anderson. That has not been his ideal offensive start, but his athleticism is on display almost every play. Out of the corner, three ball won't go from Jordan Adams. Hollingsworth in transition, turned it over, and that's been an issue, Jay, for the Hilltoppers without a true point guard on the floor. Just trying to do through a little bit too much through traffic right there. Slow down, get the numbers, and attack the transition. Here's Carlos Paez, freshman from Venezuela for Austin P. Now Terry Taylor, who had four early points. Western has struggled with him as a matchup. Six to shoot for Adams. Paez with two to shoot against Hollingsworth with one, and that will be a turnover. You'd love to see that as a coach. A shot clock violation means your team is down in the stands, and they are, they're locked in, and they're playing hard throughout the whole possession. Antoine Butler back in for Paez immediately. Butler, the sophomore from Philadelphia. Against Western Kentucky freshman Jordan Rawls from Chattanooga. He had 10 minutes, scored four points, added an assist Tuesday night of the opener against Tennessee Tech. Carson Williams was excellent in that game. Redshirt Jr. who made his Hilltoppers debut after transferring in from Northern Kentucky. Rawls off the window. Rawls had power five offers from Kansas State, Ole Miss, Georgia Tech. His father Keith was a standout for Austin P in the late 80s when Rick Stansbury was on the governor's staff. Yeah, we talked about his ability to score. He, he's not uh, necessarily a true point guard either. That time just puts his head down, able to get to the basket and make something happen off the glass. And he's called for the foul, a bump on Butler. I wonder if that connection via Austin P was a big part of the reason that Rawls turned down some of those bigger schools and ended up in Bowling Green to play for Stansbury. Get a second look at the foul. G triggers for Austin P. It's on defense for the first time for West Kentucky on the out of bounds play. Adams couldn't finish over Bassey. Justice lost it inside and was crunched as he hit the ground in a collision with Butler. Lost it out of bounds and the governors take over. Really loves going to his left, and he's strong getting into pain. That time just gets a little bit too deep. And he took a couple of hard hits. Unfortunately for him, he didn't really have possession of the basketball in either instance. Rick Stansbury still wants the foul. You can see him toward the top of your screen. 
Getting after Tommy Short, one of our officials. Adams. Silvera against Bassey. Western Kentucky fans wanted to travel, but he airballed the hook to Hollingsworth. Just the presence of Bassey in the paint right there, just for Silvera, just knowing he was there, rushed it a little bit, didn't really find his target, and not, not a great a shot attempt for him on that last possession. Hollingsworth sprawled after taking the hit from Silvera at the other end. Physical start. Talking with Western Kentucky staff before the game, you know, they, they mentioned how physical and phys just tough Austin P wanted to be. And he, yeah, assistant coach Marcus Grant said basically defensively, they, they just want to play football. They don't want you to do anything offensively that you want to run. They want to take you out of everything. They put your hands on you. They bump you off cuts. They're very physical, and that's the mentality that Coach Matt Figure has instilled in this program since coming from South Carolina. And if you watch South Carolina at all over the years, and head coach Frank Martin, you know that's the mentality that they have within their culture as well. And he's carried that over here to Austin P. Figure the OVC coach of the year in 2018, now in his third year in Clarksville. Arrived to head up the governors after the retirement of Austin P. legend Dave Luce, longtime head coach. First touch for Alec Woodard into the game, freshman from Rutledge, Georgia. Silvera hangs it in. I don't think he called bank. I didn't hear that. Did you? Justice to the corner. Hollingsworth open. And an air ball. And it's received by Silvera. Figure showed up in Clarksville fresh off the South Carolina run to the 2016 Final Four. Justice on the floor again. He was body surfing through the paint. Another three. First miss for Justice today, but the offensive rebound ends up with Williams. Coach Rick Stensbury settling his team down. I'd like to get a set play called here. On the back door, Bassey hacked by Woodard, and he will get two free throws. Great read by Jordan Rawls on the slip from Charles Bassey. Really have a lot of touches for him yet he's has been able to get to the foul line twice so far Lester Kentucky shooting better than 50 percent for the day so far Massey hit both of his free throws earlier good shooter there especially for a big guy 77 percent a year ago rolls out Savage back in another Austin P connection on this Hilltoppers roster Savage started his career with the governors including Playing a major part on the big upset run in the 2016 Ohio Valley Conference Tournament. When the Governors entered with a below 500 record on the season, seeded eighth in that conference tournament. He scored 24 points in the championship game to win the league and send Austin P as a 16 seed to a date with Kansas in the first round of the NCAA tournament in what turned out to be the penultimate season for the Governors under Dave Luce. And a final moment in the sun for him. Woodard. Outside but Justice has Bassey posted up against Silvera. And he's called for a travel. Western Kentucky has wanted some travels on the other end. It goes instead against Bassey. Austin P hanging around, but the Hilltoppers have a seven-point lead. A couple of swats from Josh Anderson helping Western early in a physical game at Diddle. Damn, yeah, going down. Western Kentucky up 23-16 with 7.36 to go in the first half. Hilltoppers with Heart program helps give WKU student athletes, coaches, and staff the opportunity to make an impact in the Bowling Green and Warren County communities. Passport Health Plan is a proud sponsor of WKU's Hilltoppers with Heart. More information is available at 1-800-578-0603. 
Nate Gatter, Jay Walton back with you from Dental Arena in Bowling Green, where Western Kentucky leads by seven. But again, Jay, it feels similar to the Hilltoppers Tuesday night opener against Tennessee Tech in that if Austin Peay could knock down a couple of open three-pointers, the governors could be right in this. They've had some good looks, just haven't been able to knock them down yet. And it's been a while since we've seen Terry Taylor with a with a touch. I'd like to see him go, the governors go to him soon to get him on track. Foul called inside against Tavion Hollingsworth, and that sends Antoine Butler, the sophomore from Philadelphia, to the foul line. Butler made five starts a year ago, became the first Cubs freshman to start at point guard since Zach Glotta in 2015. He went on to enjoy a productive Austin Peay career. Really, besides Taylor, the only guy that was in their rotation a year ago, everyone else is new. Six true freshmen, a couple of guys that were sitting out last year, grad transfer, two grad transfers. So, uh, they're, they're a lot to figure out early in the season here for Austin Peay. And ten new faces for the Governors. And only five teams in the entire country have more than Austin Peay's seven true freshmen on the roster. TCU, Air Force, Utah, Georgia, and Auburn. Austin P as young as they come. Hollingsworth harassed by Woodard. Gets rid of it to Savage. Justice has had a hot start and hits again. Whether it's man or zone defense, when the ball gets to the middle of the floor, usually good things happen. That time Savage able to drive the ball to the paint, keep his head up, and Justice, a smart player, doesn't have to move very far, just relocates to the corner for the open shot, knocks it down. Off the Taylor miss, Savage for three. Williams offensive glass, underneath for two. And Matt Figger wants timeout. Western Kentucky has stretched it to a double digit advantage. 13 of the Hilltoppers, 28 points belong to Cameron Justice. And Carson Williams, as we saw Tuesday night, Jay, is always willing to, to clean up the garbage inside. He did, he really made his presence felt on the offensive glass. Uh, their staff said he's only got one gear, and that's, that's full speed, and you can see it there. He just puts his head down. He's a big, strong, physical player. Savage not able to knock it down from the corner, but Carson Williams right there in great position. Patience with the shot fake, gets to the other side of the rim, uses weak hand for the finish. I love it. You can see his toughness, too, because I think a lot of players probably would have gone down on that contact from a big guy in Evan Henson. We, uh, you know, West Kentucky football team with a big win today. I'm not so sure they couldn't use him a little bit on the gridiron. Carson Williams, the transfer from Northern Kentucky, played a major part in the Hilltopper season opening win Tuesday night at his debut after sitting out last season. Bassey got away with a reach on Butler, but the ball, according to our officials, last touch by the Hilltoppers, and Austin P keeps it. We'll see that extended 1-3-1 out of a timeout from time to time by Coach Rick Stansberry. That time right there, not quite, didn't quite force a turnover, but try to perhaps disrupt the governor's offensive flow a little bit. Austin P, the very physical team. He said, Jay, they almost like to play football out there. Well, Matt Figger, when he was an assistant at South Carolina, had Evan Henson who inbounded that ball zero in gray toward the bottom of your screen, who was a literal football player for the Gamecocks. Butler off the mark, back iron, rebound ends up with Savage. Butler knocks it loose, they're after it in front of the bench. And it goes back to Austin P. much to the vocal dislike of Rick Stansbury, and Tavion Hollingsworth was about to get into it with Butler. You love to see the hustle, guys diving on the floor and doing what they can do to help their teams have a chance to win. And fortunately, it didn't escalate too far right there. Oh, now it does escalate. Butler and Bassey going at each other a little bit. Teams just came together again, and double technicals were handed out. It looked like Bassey is going to get it for Western Kentucky, and Butler for Austin P. A physical game that is on the urge of, or on the verge rather, of boiling over. We mentioned Henson, his football background. He was also a part of their night, uh, 2017 Final Four team, and there. Assistant coach Sergio Rocco told me before the game in, a, in an environment like this as young as the governors are They love having him here because he is he's not gonna be intimidated. He's not gonna be um, Scared walking in an environment like this and playing against Western Kentucky So he's gonna set the tone for them as as uh, a physical guy who will bang around a little bit throw his body around and 
Uh, they, they love having him in this lineup. And glad to have him back from an injury. So the technicals were against Bassey and Butler. Butler departs as well. That was his second personal foul. Hinton lobs in toward Abayev, knocked loose by Justice, and Abayev alertly knocked it off. The grant transfer from IUPUI out of bounds of the baseline, so the Governors keep it. What has been a, a ragged 30 seconds or so since the Matt Figger timeout. Here's Terry Taylor at four early points, but been quiet since then. Just two of six early in the game. Shot better than 53% a year ago. Paez wants a three. Off Taylor and Bassey out of bounds last touched by the Governors. So the zone defense on the out of bounds play by West Kentucky, Austin P not able to get the ball inside, not able to attack the paint, settle for a contested three point shot, not what Coach Matt Figger wants against his own defense. Governors shooting only 30% from the field. They have missed all six of their three point attempts. Hollingsworth, floater. Bassey in the offensive glass for two. Oh. But Charles Bassey just went down, Bassey. holding his right heel and ankle. And this would be absolutely devastating for the Hilltoppers. No, that, that's not what anybody here in Dillarena wants to see. And he's definitely in pain. Looks like he may have come down on a foot, rolled that right ankle. Let's hope it's just a, a slight sprain. Looks like he's going to walk it off. I would think he's going to be lifted from this game, but maybe not. Sometimes you want to leave a guy on the floor if he can if he can go. That way he doesn't sit on that bench very long and get stiff. Couldn't really tell, but it, it looks like he may have come down on someone's foot. Looks like he's going to stay in the game, even though he does appear to be in some discomfort. Well, I like his toughness. You, you like to see the young man stay on the floor right there. And again, he doesn't go to the bench and get stiff. Twelve point Western Kentucky lead. And Bassey is now going to come out. Anderson in. Hilltoppers on a 7 0 run. Both sides of the Matt Figure timeout. They're going to stay in the zone defense. They liked what they saw last possession, and the governor's not able to penetrate the defense, and so they're going to stay in it and see what it looks like. Hinson for three. Not a lot of guys who can hit it off a pass fake, but Evan Hinson just buried his first field goal as a governor. Once again, the inside out three is what you look for against the zone. Taylor in there commands a lot of attention at the foul line. He's able to kick it out to Hinson to the top of the key. Williams high post. Savage off a of fake. Step back three. Short rebound Butler. Austin P within single digits, looking for another bucket. Hinton had the first three of the game for the Governors. Adams thought about one of his own. Abayev against Savage, blocked away at a foul call against Abayev. That's the ninth foul against Austin P as well. So Savage will walk all the way to the other end of the floor for free throws. Savage has not shot the ball the way he's capable so far early this season and missed a pretty wide open shot on his last possession. And we talked about this at the uh, last game against Tennessee Tech. You know, sometimes when a player who's a three point shooter is struggling from distance, it's great to get yourself to the foul line. Get a couple of easy ones to go down. See the lid come off the basket. Maybe this will get him going. Savage, one of those four Hilltoppers all returning who averaged a dozen points or better last season. Richard Sr. at his second year on the floor for Western Kentucky as Hollingsworth checks out. Rawls is back in. And Bassey off the floor. The Hilltoppers are a little undersized. And let's see if they... Stay in the zone, they are. They're going to stay in the zone with Carson Williams in the middle. Adams, Butler, Hinson for three, Taylor the tip, and 
Williams eventually secures it. Rawls for three, but he stepped out of bounds. No, he traveled. So Jordan Rawls traveled just before the three-point try. Missed it anyway, and that takes us into our final official timeout of the opening half. Rick Stansbury's Hilltopper is shooting the ball well early, up by 11, late first half. Western Kentucky shooting better than 50% from the field and up 32-21 on Austin P. late in the first half back at Diddle Arena. In her fourth year on the Hill, WKU Volleyball's Sophia Serino has gone from walk-on to an all-conference player for the Lady Toppers, mixing in Conference USA's Offensive and Defensive Player of the Week honors as well. The lefty hitter has earned WKU's President's List honors every semester and Conference USA's Commissioner's Academic Medal recognition all three years of the Hill so far. An interior design major, she keeps herself busy off the court, involved in the WKU International Interior Design Association, in addition to being a small group leader with WKU's FCA organization. Brentwood, Tennessee native, has also volunteered her time in the community whenever it allows working with Habitat for Humanity and United Way. Today's Student Athlete Spotlight brought to you by Franklin Bank & Trust, your hometown bank since 1958. Antoine Butler. Matias Silvera inside. Savage was on his back. Silvera popped it in, and they're going to count the basket. The WKU bench is frustrated. Silvera was falling away well after the contact with Savage, but count it, and he'll have a chance at a three-point play. Yeah, he. Uh, that's an NBA continuation three-point play right there. Definitely a little bit late. Uh, but a great job on the shot fake. You got Savage lifted and did his job. You get your defender off the floor, and you do everything you can to Go right up through the contact and make sure you get yourself to the foul line. Rick Stansbury, a little cross-court argument with Tommy Short over that call. Silvera Short on the free throw. So it's just the two points for the Brazilian seven-footer. Charles Bassey back in the game after tweaking his ankle a little bit. So let's see if they can go to him in the post. Headed that way, Silvera broke it up momentarily. Justice, and one! Cameron Justice looking for a second four-point play in as many games as a Hilltop. Dialed in right now, and I'm gonna tell you why. I was here a couple hours before tip-off. He's the only guy out here on the floor two hours before the game going full speed, shot over 100 shots in, in, a, in a few minutes that I was sitting here watching. So there's no secret why the man can shoot the ball. Yeah, the WKU staff said that before the exhibition game against Kentucky State, Justice took 253 pointers. That was just to get ready for the team's official warm-up for a warm-up game. He's a grad transfer, a fifth-year guy. No, this is it for him. He's not a guy that's probably going to play in the NBA. He's ready to leave it all out on the floor every night for the Hilltoppers. 17 first half points for Justice. Hinson was harassed by Anderson and stepped out of bounds. Western Kentucky takes it back up by 13, largest lead of the afternoon for the Hilltoppers. Josh Anderson can be a great perimeter defender for the Hilltoppers, and right there you can see he forces his man further away from the basket than he wants to be, and gets a deflection, which leads to a turnover. Unsurprisingly, Austin P now out of the zone defense. Williams against Taylor, over Silvera, rebound Bassey. Williams after it again, and a foul called against Austin P on the rebound. It goes on Silvera, it looks like, perhaps Taylor. That's on Reginald G, who didn't even look like he was close to the basketball. Yeah, I didn't see that one either, but Carson Williams is relentless on the offensive glass, and sometimes you go that hard and it just makes people foul you. Couple bonus now for Western Kentucky, so Williams will get another. Average 12 points, nearly. Moved on to Western Kentucky, and in the end, after sitting out last season, might have had the chance to transfer and play right away this year had he stayed. John Brandon, his head coach with the Norse, Took the Cincinnati job to replace Mick Cronin, who left for UCLA. Paez, Venezuelan freshman. 
pull up G. And rebound Anderson. He would love to run. Poked out of bounds by Paez, who goes into the cheerleaders in band. Don't mind that a bit by Josh Anderson. He gets a defensive rebound. He's a guy they don't mind getting the ball and pushing out on the open floor that time, not able to break through the traffic. But, but I love the way he puts his head down in transition, trying to get something going to the basket. Anderson inside, fouled by Silvera. That's his second personal foul. And sends Anderson to the foul line. Anderson, a 71% shooter last season, another one of those 12 point a game Hilltoppers. Started 28 of 34 games last season. But looks like he's going to be asked to play almost exclusively off the bench this year. In many ways, he is a prototypical sixth man in that he's not one to defer a whole lot. He's going to come into the game and try to make an immediate impact, not only with his offensive aggression, but his ability, as we've seen already tonight, to use his athleticism on the defensive end with a couple of block shots. Well, he's a high-energy guy. They don't need extra scoring. They've got plenty of guys who can put the ball in the basket, and so that's what he brings to this team. A lot of difficulties for Austin P offensively in the first half. Hinton spinning fall away won't go. Williams clears the glass, his fifth rebound. Hollings make it Anderson the other way. He's fouled again. Going to his right. He's awful hard to stop. It's the defense on the other end that started the break. Great box out and rebound by Carson Williams and an outlet pass. And once Anderson gets it in the open floor, you know exactly what he wants to do. Get to the rack. He's a high riser, too. Appeared on SportsCenter's top 10 for three different dunks last season alone. Big reason that Rick Stansbury won't mind seeing him sprint out all by himself in transition as a one-man fast break. 18-point Western Kentucky advantage. First half that has gotten away from Austin P down the stretch. G for three. Hinson and Hollingsworth up for the offensive rebound. And Austin P keeps it with 20 on the timer. Anytime Charles Bass has been off the floor, Western Kentucky's gone to this 2-3 zone defense, and it's been good to them. Austin P has not been able to get Terry Taylor involved against this zone, settle for a lot of perimeter jump shots. Just good looks, but right now so far cannot get him to go down. Hinson has been a willing shooter, but intermittent success. Plenty of offensive rebounds for the Governors. They just have failed to convert. Three more taps, and it finally goes for Reginald G. Unsurprisingly, Rick Stansbury calls timeout, wondering how his team gave up five cracks of the same possession. With Bassey not on the floor, that's going to happen from time to time. And, uh, Austin p has got some athletic guys, too. They like to put their head down and get to the glass. And that's what happened there. They stayed with it until they finally got the tip in. And Coach going to use his 30-second timeout here with 28 seconds left to go to set something up. And if I'm Coach Stensbury, I'm thinking, you know, Charles Bassey needs a touch right here. We've got to figure out a way to get him the ball in the paint where he can turn without a post move and score. And let's see what they draw up here. A lot of times you'll see coming out of a timeout, the defense will switch to a zone because you know they know you're drawing up a play against a man-to-man. -man. So we'll see what Austin P does right here coming out of the timeout. But zone or man, I expect West Kentucky to try to get it inside to Charles Bass. So considering Rick Stansbury knows that, that there's a good chance Western Kentucky will see a different defense here, does he call a play that's going to work against either, or does he call two plays and just count on his team to recognize the defense and react? No, I think you tell them one or the other. You say, if they're in man, let's do this. They're in zone, let's do this. Uh, there's plenty of time, 28 seconds left. They want to hold for the last shot right here. So man or zone should be able to get the shot that they want. Rolls and Justice in the backcourt. Hollingsworth, the other guard on the floor, Williams and Bassey in there in the front court. And they will be seeing zone. Justice has 17 first half points to easily lead all scores. Rolls with five. 
Justice with three. Bassey inside with one, and they're not going to get a shot off. But still a strong first half for Western Kentucky on both ends of the floor, headlined by Cameron Justice's 17 points. And uh, as a team, four block shots already in the first half, including a couple of explosive ones from Anderson. That Hinson three-pointer you just saw, the only one to go down the entire half for Austin P. limited offensively, especially down the stretch. We're at the break in Bowling Green. Hometown Hilltoppers by 16. Diddle Arena in Bowling Green, where Western Kentucky used some hot first half shooting and suffocating defense to mount at times an 18 point lead that settled at 16 going into the break over Austin P. We'll step aside again and return with our, another interview in our installment of meeting Western Kentucky coaches. Stay tuned for that coming up next. Back to Diddle Arena, where Western Kentucky leads Austin P 41 to 25 at the half. We welcome you courtside. I'm Nate Gatter, joined by brand new director of cross country and track and field, Brett Chumbly, here at Western Kentucky. Coach, just recently hired, first year. How's it been so far, your first few months on the Hill? First few months have uh, been uh, frantic, we'll say, but it's been fantastic. The entire administration, the complete university community has welcomed my family and I with, with open arms. And, um, it's, it's been a, little, a lot of fun so far having to put together a staff. Uh, I've been very lucky to get uh, Coach Sykes, Coach Ansley, and we're bringing in another coach, Coach No. Uh, he's currently at Tusculum College, but he's going to come in and work with us as well. So I've been extremely fortunate. Uh, I think the reputation of Western Kentucky University has done a lot of that for me. So we're really excited to get things going. What's the process like of kind of getting to know new players, especially when you're in your first year, you didn't recruit them, and, and they're kind of getting you as much as you're getting them? Right. Well, I was the first one here August 1st. So uh, it's kind of been a trial by fire. It was by the time the first day of school started, uh, Coach Sykes had been here for about four days. So Coach Ansley got here, I think, on the first day of school. So it's been completely thrown in the deep end for everybody, sink or swim. There's been some adjustment periods, but when it comes down to it, it's still track and field. Uh, we're still running, we're still jumping, we're still throwing, we're still lifting weights. So it's it's a little bit of, a, of an adjustment, but the kids knew it coming in, we knew it coming in, so I, I think it's going really well right now. The, uh, the team's indoor and outdoor track and field schedules were just announced. What are some highlights from that you're looking forward to? I think the biggest thing for us this year is we're going to have five complete team meets in the state of Kentucky. So Hilltopper fans around can come out and see us. Um, at the same time, we might be six meets in Kentucky. We've got the regional championship at University of Kentucky. So hopefully we have a large contingent make it to the NCAA first round. So the biggest thing for us is um, staying close to the hill. Well, Coach, best of luck and uh, welcome to Bowling Green. Thank you so much. That's Appreciate Brett Chumbley, it. the first year director of cross country and track and field at Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers men's basketball team trying to go to 2 0, up 41 25 on Austin P at halftime at Diddle Arena. We'll have more highlights for the first 20 minutes and a look ahead of the 20 left when we get back. Forty-one twenty-five is the Western Kentucky lead over Austin P at the break. Good on both ends of the floor from the Hilltoppers. With that, we say hello again courtside. He's Jay Walt, the former Mississippi State Bulldog, and I'm Nate Gatter. Jay, it's easy to talk about the offensive side always. That gets the oohs and ahs. But Western Kentucky held Austin P to only 25 points in the first half. Well, that and most importantly, they bottled up Terry Taylor, Austin P's all-conference player. I think he scored on his first two possessions. Only got one field goal since then. He's three for eight from the floor, and without him, the governor's uh, going to have a hard time scoring enough points to get back in this game. You know who isn't having a tough time scoring enough points? Cameron Justice, the graduate transfer from IUPUI. Game high, 17 points in the first half. Well, he's, he's done it inside and outside. He's shooting the ball extremely well. We talked about his preparation for the game, the amount of shots that he's getting up, full speed, breaking in a sweat before the game even starts. He's been able to get in the paint and create for himself. And so, uh, yeah, he's got to keep riding the hot hand here in the early going of the second half. 
And Justice, uh, a big part of this Western Kentucky offense, certainly he did it on the defensive end as well, as did Josh Anderson. All kinds of help for Western Kentucky every which way. And Jay, we said this was going to be a bigger test. Maybe not a big one because of how much Austin P has lost, but a bigger test than Tennessee Tech. So far, the Hilltoppers have passed with flying colors. Well, a great first 20 minutes for Coach Rick Stansberry. You're talking to your team about the first five minutes of the half being the most important of the game and see how they come out. Well, that'll do it for our halftime entertainment. We'll be back with the final 20 minutes from Bowling Green after this. Western Kentucky up 16 to the break on Austin P. Western Kentucky up by 16 as we start the second half from Bowling Green. Diddle Arena where these Hilltoppers fans want to celebrate an already good Saturday that could become an incredible Saturday after the uh, Hilltoppers football team throttled Arkansas in Fayetteville 45 to 19 earlier today. And it's Topper's hoops up by 16 at the break. Nate Gatter, Jay Walton back with you from Diddle Arena, where Savage triggers to Hollingsworth, and we are underway. Western Kentucky shot 50% of the first half, attempted 15 free throws. Hollingsworth fouled underneath. And Jay, we talked about it Tuesday night. That's a staple of Rick Stansbury coach teams. Both Tuesday night against Tennessee Tech when the Hilltoppers attempted 26 free throws against the Golden Eagles, six. So far this season, over three halves, 41 free throw attempts for Western Kentucky, 11 for their opponents. Yeah, last year on the season, they made more free throws than their opponents attempted. That's a sign of a team that's aggressive and wants to attack. And, you know, let's face it, Dental Arena can be unfriendly. There's a reason why their record is what it is at home. And sometimes here at Diddle, they're going to shoot more free throws than their opponents. Another quick foul call this time against Matias Silvera. That's his third. And the team second inside the opening 14 seconds. Austin P has already been called for 15 fouls in this game. Underneath Savage, blocked partially from behind by Adams, but finished anyway. Second time they've been able to score on that same exact out of bounds play. Just a simple box play, screen to screen interaction, and Austin P's young guys. Sometimes that happens on the defensive end for a young team. They're not, communication's not quite where it needs to be, and nobody helped. Harry Taylor swings to Paez, who gets the start to begin the second half. Adams swatted by Savage. Fifth block shot already by Western Kentucky. A great recovery. He was trailing Adams. Adams thought he had a really clean look. Savage comes out of nowhere and elevates for the block. Just over five blocks per game last year for the Hilltoppers with lead Conference USA, and it looks like they're going to do more of the same this year based on the first couple of games. G baseline through Taylor's legs. Hollingsworth the other way. Into contact. Paez fouled him. That is three Austin P fouls now in 49 seconds of the second half. <laughs> the youth of Austin P's team is apparent right now in the matchup with Justice with the full beard, the fifth year senior, and Paez is true freshman, baby faced. I mean, that, that's kind of the shows you the tail of the game right here the experience versus the youth. Justice again, underneath. Screen to screener again. Third time they've got a layup. Austin P has got to figure that out. That's 19 points for Cameron Justice, better than his per game average. Last season of 18.6 at IUPUI before coming to the Hill for one season as a graduate transfer. Jordan Adams, the freshman from Silsby, Texas. Paez on Hollingsworth, caught in the air, but found Taylor, who has six. Taylor just three for eight. He shot better than 53% last season and route to more than 20 points a game. Pia has called for another foul. This one for two hands on Hollingsworth. And Austin P has made it easy on Western Kentucky to get to the foul line so far today. I'm going to have to go zone here. Just having a hard time matching up early in the second half. Just simply to stay out of foul trouble right here, going to have to go to the zone defense. And there they pick up another one. Paez has fouled three times in just over a minute and a half since the break. And I don't know, Jay, that I've ever seen a team hit five fouls 
in a minute and 33 seconds. Certainly not the first minute 33, maybe the last minute 33 if you're losing. Put your defense at a disadvantage. You, you really, you know, you got to, you're forced to play zone, even if you don't want to, for the rest of the half, simply because you've got to keep West Kentucky off the foul line now. And if I'm Rick Stansberry, I'm staying in attack mode. I'm putting my head down, I'm getting drive to the basket, I'm putting the ball in the paint, uh, and forcing to stop me from getting to the basket. And right on cue, the Hollingsworth finger roll, his first bucket since the opening field goal of the game. 20-point Western Kentucky lead for the first time. Taylor against Williams. Had four points in the first half, has four just past the first two minutes of the second. Yeah, anytime Carson Williams is guarding him, Taylor is going to look to take him out on the perimeter, use his perimeter skills, play off the dribble a little bit, has a great spin move, and finish in the paint for Terry Taylor on the other end. Meanwhile, Taylor then fouled Hollingsworth. Six team fouls on Austin P. so two coming for Hollingsworth on the shooting foul, and the Hilltoppers will shoot on every ensuing governor's foul, the final 17-43 of this game, at least in regulation. Hollingsworth last season shot 77% from the free throw line. Started all 74 games now of his career on the hill. G checks in for Austin P. Alec Woodard went out. Has a towel up around his face. Had a bloody nose. Getting some attention now from the training staff. Hollingsworth hits both. Four points quickly for him early in the second half. He went over 1,000 in his career Tuesday night against Tennessee Tech. Became only the third Hilltopper ever of the 50 who have scored 1,000 to reach that point in the opener of his junior season. First since Courtney Lee in 2006. Now a 12-year NBA veteran. Tavion looks in the mood early in the second half. Bassey steps back for a three. Hollingsworth hacked by G. And before we played even three minutes in the second half, Western Kentucky will be going to the foul line in the bonus. Makes for a long second half if you're Austin P. Just figure out, you know, how in the world are we going to match up with these guys? And uh, just things not going their way right now. And the experience of West Kentucky and their, their physical nature really, really taking over in the early minutes of the second half. Hollingsworth has hit three of four free throws so far, make it four out of five today. Last season, he added a point per game to his numbers from his freshman year, but his field goal and three-point percentages both dropped considerably, about six points each. He shot slightly under 32% from three on the season. Was a third-team all-conference selection, but I would think, Jay, that especially as he's asked to undertake more ball-handling responsibilities, it's an opportunity for him to take a little bit of a step back, maybe not worry about scoring at such volume and instead try to be a facilitator and when he does score, do so efficiently. Well, you, you hope that's his mindset. That's certainly what his team needs from him right now. Then a little bit more dis distribution and, and put his head down trying to make baskets for himself and, uh, until, you know, we hear one way or the other where West Kentucky's going to have the services of Kenny Cooper, the Lipscomb transfer at point guard. He, he might be playing that role for an extended period of time. Three minutes gone by, second half. Western Kentucky leads by 22. Justice and Hollingsworth against this zone that Western Kentucky has continually shot the governors out of. Justice stepped on the sideline in front of the Western Kentucky bench. And Jay, we saw that Tuesday night, maybe another unintended consequence of moving the uh, three-point line back close to half a foot that there's just not a lot of space now in the corner for those guys and Justice went to take his little step backward to get his momentum going and put his heel on the sideline. Not quite as tight as it is in the NBA in the corners uh, behind the three-point line but certainly a uh, few less inches to work with near the benches. Taylor finishes over Bassey. He's in a double figures with a team best 10 points. Really need to try to get him going offensively. Hollingsworth and Savage wanted a touch from Evan Hinson, didn't get it. Austin P takes over. Governor's down 20. They do have a lot of game left with which to work. Still more than 16 minutes on the clock. 
Here's Taylor. Has not hit a three yet. Still has it. A buy up on the offensive glass. Got it to go. If Austin P could finish more reliably off offensive rebounds, the Governors could be in a very different place right now. Like a few more of those chippies around the basket, knock down a couple more jumpers. If you're Matt Figger, you're telling your young team, you know, hey, we can't get it all back at once. Let's settle in offensively, dig in defensively, claw, scratch, and get back in this thing a little bit at a time. 11 points now for Hollingsworth, eight of the second half. Abayev trapped underneath and fouled by Savage to take us to our first timeout of the second half. It's a 20-point Western Kentucky lead at Diddle Arena. Austin Peay trying to battle back, but a whole lot of that. Jared Savage, the rejection, Justice scoring underneath. He has a game by 19 points. Hollingsworth has eight early in the second half. Terry Taylor's Austin P. Governor is down 20 early in the second half at Diddle Arena in Bowling Green. A homecoming for Taylor, who went to high school only four miles from Diddle Arena, where he's first team All-State at Bowling Green High School. Two-time first team All-OVC selection and the preseason conference player of the year this season. He's finally getting it going now in the second half. Had only three offers to go to Division I schools out of high school. Southeast Missouri and Texas Southern joined Austin P. Taylor scores inside. No, he just missed, and Savage pulls down the rebound, including the hometown Hilltoppers not interested in him, Jay, but they certainly weren't alone in missing out on Taylor. There's a lot more than three teams that love to have Terry Taylor right now, and every team that prepares for Austin B this year throughout the season, the first question they're going to have to ask is, okay, how are we going to guard Taylor? Are we going to put a smaller guy on him? If, if they do, Taylor can take that guy into the post. Uh, use his size and strength. If they put a bigger guy on him, he can move that guy away from the basket, use his perimeter skills and slashing ability to get to the basket. So he's a handful. He's a problem for anybody that they play all season long. There was reportedly an offer from Western Kentucky on the table under Ray Harper, who preceded Rick Stansbury, but that was not available to Taylor when he eventually finished. And committed to Austin Peay, where he came in with Matt Figger. New head coach started at the same time in Clarksville. Basie, or Basie wide open from the foul line off the mark. Williams in a crowd, fouled by Taylor. Weren't a lot of options for Carson Williams, but he found his way to the foul line. <laughs> the option is put my head down, use my strength, make something happen. And you can see Rick Stansbury with a fist pump on the sideline after he, fin after he draws the foul. Just two guys hanging off his arms. And they cannot take the ball away from him. And that's what he has to do. Former Kentucky Mr. Basketball from Owenton has made no bones about it for all of his strength at 230 pounds. He's decidedly undersized at six foot five to play in the post, particularly once Western Kentucky gets into Conference USA competition. No, that's Bassey's domain. He's not going to play down there with his back to the basket. And Coach Rick Stensbury talked about, you know, I've got to figure out ways to get him involved in our offense. He's trying to figure out how he can play on the perimeter. He's not the most skilled guy. He can handle and, and screen and pass a little bit, but not, certainly not a, a playmaker with the ball. But, um, but, but nevertheless, a guy that they have to have on the floor just because of the mentality that he brings and the physicality that he brings to the table. He had an excellent debut. He stole the show the first half against Tennessee Tech to begin the season Tuesday night. First half was the Cameron Justice show this afternoon. Fellow transfer in his first week with the Hilltoppers. Foul inside called against Cozart on Eli Abayev, who will go to the foul line. That's a great move by Abayev on the baseline. I think that's something Austin P will be looking for early in the year is, a, you know, a, who else can score for us? Who else can give us offensive punch besides Terry Taylor? We've got a lot of young guards in the lineup. Certainly, if some of these other post players could score around the basket, that'd make things a lot easier for them offensively. Abayev's third point. Richard Jr. from Deerfield Beach, Florida. Out injured to begin last season, and the end is added to redshirt. Spent the summer with Team USA at the 2019 European Maccabi Games. Averaged 17 points, 15 rebounds over six games to win goal. Evan hints in the offensive rebound. Abayev again, had it knocked loose by Kozart. Austin P. Bench wanted to foul and didn't get it. Justice walks into a three. Got it again! It's what you call a heat check. He's had a hot hand all day long, and that's how in transition. Just going to see if I can still keep feeling a little bit, and he is. Taylor right back the other way, an athletic finish. But Justice has 22 points on nine field goal attempts. He's eight of nine from the floor, five out of six from deep. What an asset he looks like he's going to be. 
Well, this Western Kentucky squad in his only season in Bowling Green. They leave him again. Off the mark. Missed that one because he was too open. He couldn't believe that they ran off and left him wide open for the three. Hinton's had a quick trigger tonight. Buries it in transition. Another guy that the Governors could use a little bit of more offensive punch from. Adams marking justice everywhere he goes. Cozart on the roll, underneath for two. And second, Cozart. Cozart sets a great ball screen, forces the help, runs right to the rim, and is a heads-up pass by Jordan Ross, threading the needle a little bit. Abayev got away with a push-off on Cozart and finished. Anderson for three. His first triple of the year. That's not what he does all day long for you, but so wide open there, he decided to let it fly. It worked out. Adams fouled by Kozar. And Rick Stansbury was getting after Jordan Rawls for the bench, saying that was his. Of course, as the defensive team, you never want to see a rebound bounce. Jordan Adams at the line. Austin P has had plenty of second opportunities, just has not, for the most part, made the most of them. Adams off target with the first. Freshman from Silsby, Texas. Three-star prospect, ranked as the number 22 player out of Texas last season. His high school teammates with fellow Gubs freshman Devin McLean. Both were formerly committed to Baylor. Both also held offers from Oklahoma State, TCU, among others. Former childhood best friends. Both averaged more than 20 a game at Silsby High School. Take them to back-to-back -back Texas 4A titles. But McLean, a big loss for Austin P. He was the first player since Shaq to score 35 in a Texas State Championship game. Steal by Adams, in by himself, and he's fouled by Anderson. Well, Adams a guy they'd love to get untracked. He has, they have high expectations for, for this young man. Sergio Rocco, Austin P. assistant, former West Kentucky assistant, tells me that uh, you know, he, he reminds me of a Courtney Lee, which Hilltopper fans will certainly remember uh, from his days here in Bowling Green. But Jordan Adams going to have a great career, just unable to get it going offensively today so far. But that was a great anticipation in the passing lane, which leads to an easy opportunity on the other end. McLean would have been a, another big piece for this governor's offensively challenged lineup tonight. Taylor off the offensive rebound, spins against Kozart, played through contact, and his second effort goes. McLean tore his ACL final couple of weeks of preseason. Player with a scary injury past from his high school days in Texas as well. Courtney Lee, of course, joint all-time leading scorer at Western Kentucky, middle part of the 2000s, now a 12-year NBA veteran. Star on that 2007 Sweet 16 team for the Hilltoppers. Anderson baseline all the way to the cup. No rotation on the help side from Austin P. They get locked into their man so much and trying to be physical and just take away passing lanes that sometimes, sometimes the help side does not get there in time. And that time Anderson was able to put his head down, get all the way to the basket on the baseline. Reginald G answered with the triple. Williams in the lane, comes free for two. Back and forth second half in which Austin P has played with a lot more vigor than the opening 20 minutes. The Governors had 25 first half points. They have 22 already, just more than 11 minutes of the second half. G can't double up with three pointers. Had a foul called inside on the rebound against Western Kentucky that sent Taney, Terry Taylor rather to the deck. Looked like he might have had words with the Western Kentucky band as well over there on the baseline. So that'll take us to the break. Davion Hollingsworth has had a nice second half for Western Kentucky. Cameron Justice has kept it going. And Rick Stansbury's Hilltoppers up by 20 with 10 and change to go from Diddle Arena.
Western Kentucky up 20 in the second half. Rick Stansbury is somewhere in there talking to his Hilltoppers, one of many ties back and forth between these two programs. Started his career as an assistant with the Governors in the 1980s. Played a part in his recruitment of Jordan Rawls, certainly familiarity with Jordan's dad, Keith. But uh, beyond that, something Rick Stansbury is known for, Jay, that we've talked about each of these first two games of the season for the Hilltoppers is his team going to the foul line a lot. Last season, though, as often as they went there, they didn't shoot spectacularly, 72%, a good, not great number. Tonight, 19 out of 21, shooting free throws at better than a 90% clip. If they can shoot toward the top of Conference USA with how often they go to the line, that's a huge weapon. Yeah, that's that you can win a lot of games shooting 19 for 21. But even if you're not, like you said, even if your percentages are not that high, you're putting pressure on the other team's defense. You, you make force them to play more people than they want to play. You force them to go zone more than they want to go zone. And so there's a lot of advantages to get to the line, uh, even when you don't make 19 out of 21. Antoine Butler was fouled shooting a three by Josh Anderson. That was the 12th free throw attempt. Thus far for the governors. Catching up just a little bit to Western Kentucky, but still the Hilltoppers have attempted more than twice the free throws of their opponents through about a game and three quarters this season. 17 point lead for the home team. Rawls. Williams. Rawls for three. Jordan Rawls' ability to get in the paint. He gets in the paint, gets his head up, kicks out to Carson Williams. He's rewarded for his unselfishness. Carson Williams in turn drives back in the paint and finds him in the corner for the open three. No basket for Terry Taylor. Travel call. A three-pointer for Rawls was the first of his collegiate career. And Hollingsworth fouled. Push of the back. Called against Jordan Adams. Austin, 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 19 foul against Austin P. Hollingsworth has come to life offensively in the second half. Eight of his 11 have come since the break. Played over 2,500 minutes across his first two seasons as a Hilltopper, 2,563 of the last two years, most ever by a Western Kentucky player in his first two seasons. We talked about what a great fit it's been for him here, had probably some chances to play at higher levels, but come to a place where he knew he was going to be a big part of what was going on for his entire career. And he said nobody's played more than he has here on the Hill. Woodard off the mark with a three. Taylor tracks down a long-range offensive rebound all the way to the rim. He's fouled at the last moment by Bassey. Speaking of shooting free throws, Terry Taylor going to get to the line a lot throughout this season. That's part of his game. Why he'll be one of the tougher matchups in the Ohio Valley Conference. Western Kentucky has been good at, at not having to foul him so far at least. That's his first free throw attempt today. 11 of his 15 points now since halftime as well. Seems like these scores are similar to Charles Bassey on opening night for Western Kentucky when he had a, a rough first half and wouldn't have a didn't have the kind of game that would draw a lot of headlines. These top players still end up getting theirs and Taylor has gone for 12 in just over 10 minutes of the second half to pull to 16 leading his team today. Backdoor Savage, let it go right through his hands. I think Jared already had his mind made up that he was going to dump off to Bassey, hoping for a big dunk, and took his eye off the ball before he caught it. Not able to make the play. Another quiet game for Bassey. Six points, five rebounds so far. Only four attempts from the floor. Butler for three. Williams and a buy of Tango for the rebound. Alternating possession 
will keep it with the governor. And Charles Bassey having some kind of a disagreement with the officials along with Jared Savage. With Joe DeRosa over there on the baseline. So timeout called by Austin P. 20 point Western Kentucky lead with nine and a half to go second half. Western Kentucky in the second half Tuesday night against Tennessee Tech kind of let the Golden Eagles come back at one point cut what had been a 21 point lead all the way down to single digits late on. Doesn't look like it's going to be the same story today Jay it's uh, been a, a much stronger wire to wire effort thus far for the Hilltoppers who are not far off pace to score 100 points. Still a lot of time in this game and if you're Rick Stansberry you're telling your team hey guys let's finish the deal here. Let's don't get sloppy. Let's 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 stay locked in defensively still take care of the ball and get good shots. Same story for him that he's only gone eight deep. Three bench players have appeared, only seven, two off the bench and played double digit minutes. Foul called against Hollingsworth. That is the seventh on Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers make it the eighth. They've caught up to Austin P. just about in the uh, foul column after the governors piled up the fouls very, very quickly in the first three minutes of the second half. So Butler at the line. And if on the other hand, if you're Matt Figure, you're telling your young Austin P team guys, it's not over. We got time to get back in this thing. We've got to string together some defensive stops. We got to keep getting good shots, get a couple to go down. We can, we can claw our way back in this thing. And they have been much better in the second half. Western Kentucky has only outscored Austin P by two points since the break. Savage ahead to Williams. Outside Hollingsworth. Williams, corner three. In and out, a buy of the rebound. Adams for three. Austin P within 15. There you go. Stop with one end leads to an open three in the corner for Jordan Adams. We talked about him earlier. Young man, they love to get on track here offensively. First collegiate three pointer for Adams on his seventh try. And across the governor's first couple of official games this year. Foul called against Adams. And the backcourt sends Hollingsworth back to the free throw line where he's been making a living, in particular in the second half. He's hit seven of eight free throws today. <laughs> Hollingsworth has added. Couple of assists, six rebounds to his now 14 points, second only to Cameron Justice on the team. He has turned the ball over three more times. He had five of those in the opener Tuesday night against Tennessee Tech. And Jay, even though it seems like he's been more under control, especially in the second half today, that's still a concern. It is. I, I think he's done a much better job today than he did against Tech. Uh, just the other night got a little bit too loose with it, trying to do too much in traffic. Uh, tonight he's had some turnovers, but they've been attacking turnovers when he's trying to, you know, feed the post or the, the turnovers he's had are ones that would lead to a basket. So you can live with that as a coach. Butler draws a double team of the paint. Abaya. Rebound Bassey. Williams against Taylor. Spins past him, has it swatted, but a foul. Either on Taylor or on Abaya, who was helping underneath. It's the latter who's called for it. Richard Jr. from Florida. It's a fourth foul on Abayev. He's very under control on that post move. He's got a low, wide base. He's hard to knock off his course, and he just relentless when he attacks the basket. It's hard to take the ball away from him when he gets it in those two hands, and again, able to work himself to the foul. Pull up, 
Hollingsworth. Well short. Savage secures it just ahead of the baseline. Justice ahead for Hollingsworth. He's after it with Woodard. Hollingsworth on the baseline. Pushed off and it's an offensive foul. Western Kentucky crowd doesn't like it. A couple of Hilltoppers assistant coaches not so sure either, but looked from here at our angle like you could see Hollingsworth get away with a little uh, left forearm shiver into the midsection of Alec Woodard. So that takes us to break. Western Kentucky still up 18, under eight to go. Second. Western Kentucky Band leading ceremonies at Diddle Arena, and it's uh, certainly been that kind of afternoon for Hilltoppers fans who have made their way to Diddle after the football team took down Arkansas, and now watching their basketball team lead by 18 over Austin P. Charles Bassey has been quiet. The uh, freshman and defensive player of the year in the conference last season. Looks like he was dealing with a, a little cut, maybe on that left hand as well. It's uh, bandaged up, and the assistants were trying to get some blood off of his uniform during the timeout. So perhaps part of the reason, it's certainly been a physical game. Austin P has wanted to take it to Western Kentucky defensively, but the Hilltoppers will want more from Bassey as this season goes on. Woodard against Justice. Hinson with six to shoot. Transfer from South Carolina. Has it rattle out, and Bassey clears the glass with his seventh board. Williams looked at a back cutting Savage. Instead, the Hilltoppers cycle it. Justice comes up lame. Savage with six to shoot. Williams with three. Williams to the rim for the reverse. It's a nice job of using the rim to protect against the block, using the weak hand to finish under the glass. It's a 20-point Western Kentucky lead again. The Hilltoppers have hit six of their last seven. Hinson has not been shy in his Austin P debut. Baseline Woodard over Bassey for two. Woodard right on Hollingsworth all the way. Bassey, the freshman All-American a year ago. Has been active without the basketball, but bottled up. Williams on the drive. Savage open for three. Timeout, Western Kentucky. Jared Savage finally connects on a three-pointer. He was one of four in the opener Tuesday night. That's his first in five tries this afternoon, and uh, he's just another piece for this explosive, potent Hilltoppers offense. Well, Savage really needed that shot to go down. He struggled these first two games. Great three-point shooter for the Hilltoppers all last season, and this sometimes early in the year it takes a while to get going, and he, he loved seeing that ball go through the net. Unselfish play by Carson Williams off the dribble drive as well. And I wonder with that timeout, sort of odd that you get it from the team leading by 21 points. If Rick Stansbury now with six minutes and change to go is going to start to think about going deeper into his bench, having only used eight players, only seven for double-digit minutes today. You'd love to finish this game, stretch the lead a little bit, get some of these younger players in the rotation. Let's let Jordan Rawls have an opportunity to get a better feel for running this team. Let's get Cozart off the bench and show what he can do inside. Western Kentucky will be at Eastern Kentucky. First road test of the year Friday night. That'll be a 6 o'clock Central Time ESPN+. Plus. Meanwhile, Austin P will be at Tulsa next Saturday. That's a 2 o'clock Central Time start on ESPN3. And this is just the first of a very, very difficult road non-conference schedule for the Governors. Well, perhaps the biggest name programs on Austin P's schedule aren't at their peak. Governor's non-conference slate still features Western Kentucky and Tulsa to be followed by Vanderbilt, Arkansas, West Virginia, and Georgia. A gauntlet of a half dozen games if there ever was one. I think you and I talked the other day about how some of the programs don't exactly ring out as far as blue blood names on Western Kentucky's schedule, but those teams are can play the Rhode Islands, the Belmonts, the Wright States. Don't exactly, uh, you know, make the college, the average college basketball fan 
Didn't raise your awareness, but those teams can play. Taylor in traffic. Rattles out. Bassey the rebound. Taylor takes it right back from him. And one. What competitiveness from the Bowling Green native Terry Taylor. Had a tough afternoon. You know he liked to play great today in front of his hometown crowd coming back to Bowling Green. And, but that play right there just shows you how relentless he is. And he's a great offensive rebounder. He's never one and done. He's three times off the floor before you can jump once. And that time was able to stay with it and finish over Bassey with the left hand. Being left handed is a little bit unique matchup for, for guys too. That makes, makes him even more special. He's on Carson Williams, a transfer from Northern Kentucky. Hollingsworth for three. Got it. Tavion Hollingsworth has 15 second half points. And he's closing in on Cameron Justice for the team lead. Reginald G, the Alabama State transfer, immediately answers for the Governors. Carson Williams said, hey, coach, we don't have a true point guard. That's fine. I can play off the dribble. Let me distribute. Second time in a row here, he's gotten into the paint, kicked out for open three-point shots. You have to think Terry Taylor not, wanted not only to show out back home in Bowling Green, a stoppage now from the officials who want to fix the net, not only to show out in front of his hometown fans, but you would think that there's a maybe a Bowling Green-sized chip on his shoulder as well for the fact that Western Kentucky decided not to extend him a scholarship offer. Now, not alone, only had those three offers, one from Austin P. Southeast Missouri and Texas Southern joined in the Division I ranks. But the hometown school had to have been a target for Taylor, and safe to say he showed it up that he could have helped this team. Just before the timer, Williams off the mark. Bassey in the offensive glass. Once no, twice yes. Bassey. Charles Bassey doing his best Terry Taylor impersonation, staying with the offensive glass, finally getting the ball to go down. Bassey only the second freshman of the country since 1992 to average at least 14 points, 10 rebounds, and two blocks. G misses on the pull up. And Bassey the other way, had it poked out of his hands by Taylor. His pass in front of Woodard, and Austin P can try to reset, but Woodard wants the quick trigger instead. Rebound this time corralled by Bassey. The only other freshman since 1992 to meet those numbers, Anthony Davis. Say he turned out okay after his one season at Kentucky. That's a pretty good company. And keep in mind that Bassey graduated high school a year early. He only turned 19 a week before the season started. Williams against Taylor. Hollingsworth, another three. 21 for Tavion Hollingsworth. Three point goal. All things clicking for West Kentucky and Carson Williams really create. I mean, using his ability to dribble, get in the paint, eyes up, finding open shooters. And Jared Savage and Hollingsworth both beneficiaries of the assist from Williams. High is inside, Woodard outside. Got it. If Charles Bassey's somewhat off and on offense has been the disappointment through a couple of games, or at least the concern for the Hilltoppers, Rawls on the attack, Hollingsworth thought about another one. It's this outside offense for the Hilltoppers that has been the positive. Bassey hits from mid-range. West Kentucky last year made only six three-pointers a game, fewest in Conference USA. Ten out of 19 today. Looks like this is going to be a much more explosive outside attack for the Hilltoppers than it was a year ago. Rick Stansbury was concerned about their offense last year at the end of the year. I think I think 71 points per game maybe in league play. Like to get up high 70s, 80s. Bassey fell out of Baev and was called for the foul. It's been a physical afternoon and the officials intelligently getting in there quickly just to try to separate the teams before we go to our final official timeout of the second half. Western Kentucky after a quiet offensive opener up 90 to 66 late on today. Back in Bowling Green where Western Kentucky after maybe taking a foot off the gas pedal Tuesday night of the opener against Tennessee Tech when a lead of more than 20 points was cut down to nine. The Hilltoppers have gone up by 24, 90 to 66 late out of this game. Nate Gatter, Jay Walton back with you from Diddle Arena. And Jay, uh, seems clear 
that if Western Kentucky shoots the ball at a high level, both from three, where the Hilltimers are shooting better than 50% today, and from the free throw line, where they're shooting close to 90% today, this is going to be an extremely difficult team to slow down at the offensive end of the floor. Very efficient today, 50% from the field, and as you mentioned, the way they shot free throws today, you can win a lot of games at the foul line shooting that well. So good things team uh, from Coach Rick Stansberry's team this afternoon on the offensive end and done a great job defensively, especially on uh, Terry Taylor, the governor's all-league player and their number one go-to guy. Eli Abayev at the foul line out of the timeout. Bassey and Hollingsworth have checked out for Western Kentucky, now getting a dip a little bit deeper into the bench. Rawls is still out there along with Isaiah Cozart back in and Jeremiah Gambrell, the redshirt freshman from Houston, on the floor for the first time tonight, along with starters Savage and Williams. So, Jay, looking ahead for this team, because another relatively easy win, although a physical one certainly today, in which the Hilltoppers were pushed mentally a little bit and challenged by the physical play from the Governors. What is the ceiling for this team going forward? As early as it is, still some kinks to work out, still some questions about who exactly will be on the roster, namely Kenny Cooper, if he'll get that NCAA waiver to be eligible this year. This is an overwhelming Conference USA favorite, but is there a ceiling to win a game or two in the NCAA tournament? Could this be a, a return to the Sweet 16 for Western Kentucky for the first time since 08? Well, everything starts with, with, this, with the leads. Conference USA is where you're going to start. And like you they are going to be the favorite for that team. Anything less than a championship there will likely be considered a disappointment. And then in the NCAA tournament, Anything could happen. So certainly this team has a chance to make a run, win a couple games, and get back to a Sweet 16 or, or better. But you know you want to you want to start. There's, there's three different levels to the season. You got the preseason, you got the conference play, and then the postseason. And plenty of time to worry about all that. Just take care of business one step at a time. Get better every game. You think this is the kind of team that factors well as Rolls uses a timeout trapped in the corner in conference play, and then even going as far as the conference and the NCAA tournament, considering the. Uh, ability of this team on both ends of the floor the athleticism and the shot blocking that that creates a really good defensive team and then the outside shooting that can get hot any game and the experience maybe more so than anything on the offensive end where this starting lineup is featuring four upperclassmen one sophomore who oh by the way was a freshman all-american well you just mentioned every single tool that a team needs to to be competitive and make a run in the NCAA tournament and for the first time in his tenure here, Coach Rick Stansberry feels like he's, he's got all that. Like you mentioned, he's got the experience. He's got balanced scoring. He can score inside. He's got offensive presence uh, outside. He's got Bassey, who's a shot blocker and a great rebounder. So you've got all the things that you need uh, to make that kind of run. And if you throw a Kenny Cooper in the mix, who has uh, – you know, a lot of experience under his belt, has played an NCAA tournament, has made a deep run in the NIT. If you bring him into the mix as a true point guard, then the ceiling goes even higher. Because you'd probably say that's the only ingredient they're missing right now for the experience they have in their backcourt, which is significant. A junior in Hollingsworth, a grad transfer in Justice, they don't have anybody with significant point guard experience in the Division I level, so Cooper could bring that final piece to the puzzle to help Western Kentucky avoid maybe the only bugaboo offensively for this team right now, which is turnovers. Well, it just it frees Hollingsworth up not to worry about distributing. He can cut loose and look for his offense a little bit more, and Cameron Justice to continue to look for his offense a little bit more instead of trying to create for other teammates primarily. We've seen already what that one-two punch can do in this game. Justice 17 in the first half, game high 22. Hollingsworth second in scoring with 21, 18 of which have come in the second half. They just sort of pass the baton from one to the other at the break. Right. Pick your poison if you're, if you're trying to guard the perimeter players for West Kentucky this year. You, can, you can't key on one guy. Jackson Harlan in, making his collegiate debut. First team All-State selection a year ago at Clinton County High School. A couple of free throws go down for Jared Savage, the last Western Kentucky starter on the floor. He's up to 11 points now against his former school. Ahead to Gambrell. And Western Kentucky now just three from the 100 mark, which certainly would get this crowd going. Yeah, I think they want it. They want, they want the century mark. Paez, the lob to Taylor. That equals justice for the game high with 22 points. 
Taylor in the end surpassed his average from last season, even after a very slow start, 18 for him in the second half. Henrik Stenzer, I think, is going to want a timeout. He's trying to call one, and the officials aren't giving it to him. They're supposed to give it to him this year in the last two minutes. And Rick Stansbury now has been granted the timeout. He was dealing with the official Tommy Short on the far side. He was trying to call timeout, and Short wasn't giving it to him. Savage checks out. He's replaced by Patrick Murphy, making his first appearance of the season. That's a rule change this year that the officials, you can see Short there on the far side, they're supposed to allow coaches to call live ball timeouts in the final two minutes. Even though the previous rule change, Paez the steal goes the other way with a Paez who's turned away by Kozar to the rim, but a foul. And coaches now are supposed to be allowed to use those even though the, the former rule change said live ball timeouts can only be called by players on the floor. That now applies for only the first 38 minutes of the game. foul, but it can be a presence around the rim, too, down the road here for the Hilltop. Shows you just how shallow, if you will, Rick Stansbury likes to play, that emptying his bench only entails getting to 10 players used in a game, which for many teams, especially at this stage of the season, would be the first half alone. Do you think some of the more experienced players like to see that from Cozart, even that he gives away the foul, you know, with a 20-some-odd point lead, he's still protecting the rim, no dunks? Oh, absolutely. Nobody comes in here and is going to dunk on us. Rolls for three, didn't get the bounce. Cozart still after it. It's out of bounds. Last touch by the Governors. Rolls gave Western Kentucky its last opportunity at hitting the century mark. You see Cozart there was called for the earlier foul. And the Hilltoppers now could have just run the clock out, but Murphy couldn't get it in. So Pius and Austin P will have one final opportunity. Looks like the Governors are just going to let the clock run out. So Western Kentucky J finishes much more strongly in the second half, certainly today, against a better team than the 12-point win over Tennessee Tech in the opener Tuesday night. It'll be a 2-0 record for the Hilltoppers. Headed to Richmond to take on Eastern Kentucky Friday night for the first road game of the year. Western Kentucky 97, Austin P 75. Great job offensively today, much more so than in their opener. Uh, really got all cylinders clicking inside, outside. Got a couple guys to see some shots go in the basket offensively for the Hilltoppers today, which is always good. And, you know, if things get tougher from here, the road in college basketball is, is a tough place to live. And, uh, they will leave the friendly confines of Dill Arena, you know, from here on out, and they'll have to play better, but certainly pleased. Uh, Coach Rick Stander got to be pleased with where his team stands right now. Fantastic shooting for Western Kentucky, a couple of 20-point scores, and Charles Bassey, a dozen rebound. So for Jay Walton, our producer Jessica Gibbs, the rest of our fantastic crew, Nate Gatter saying so long for Bowling Green. Final is Western Kentucky, 97-75. This has been a presentation of ESPN.